They call this the land of the midnight sun, a real life winter wonderland and home of the awesome Northern Lights. An enchanting place with tales of trolls and people with the power to create ice. This magical landscape is the inspiration for the Kingdom of Arundel in Disney's new animated comedy adventure, Frozen. Let's go beneath the ice and find out what this movie's all about. Coming up, we'll be checking into animation school and we'll be checking out some Sub-Zero special effects. We'll be finding out how a Disney heroine fixes her hair and you'll be meeting a snowman who'll have you in pieces. <laughs> what? I don't do the cold. I'm really soaking up the sun here in LA at the legendary Walt Disney Animation Studios. Did you know they were the first people ever to make animated movies. From classics like Snow White and The Little Mermaid to Tangled and that video bad guy turned good, Wreck-It Ralph. They were all created right here. And if you're anything like me, then you are dying to find out about their new movie, Frozen. Let's go and check it out. Whoa, he's a bit scary. So first, let's go to the story studio and meet the directors. This way. Whoa. Back up, back up. Sorry. That's the broom cover. Hey. Hey, we are the directors of Frozen. Welcome to Walt Disney Animation Studios. Thank you for having me. We can't wait to show you an inside look at Frozen. Listen, we have some special. So this is Frozen Access oh, Pass great. for you. It's going to get cool. you into everything Frozen. Yep. All right? Come on, start. Well, we're going to start in the story room. Story room A, where everything kind of started, all the story and everything. Right. Let's get frozen. Chris, Jen, thank you so much for having me down here at Disney Animation Studios. You're welcome. Uh, now, I want to get beneath the ice of Frozen, so can you tell me a little bit about the story? It was something that Disney had never done. They'd never done a whole feature that dealt with the world of ice and snow. Arendelle. It's completely frozen. Now we just have to survive this blizzard! That's no blizzard! That's my sister! It's funny, and yet you feel for them at the same time. So more comedy than, than you've done before. It's even more comedy than we sort of originally set out to do. Mm -hmm. Some of the characters just took off and became yeah. really funny. Anna's probably the funniest female character we've ever had. My lady. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Huh, this is awkward. Oh. Not you're awkward, but just because we're, I'm awkward. You're gorgeous. Wait, what? Of course there's Olaf, the snowman. Hi, everyone. I'm Olaf. <laughs> Hi. You're creepy. Whoa. I don't want it. Whoa. No. All right, we got off to a bad start. He's unbelievable. He's kind of an animator's dream in that he's a character that can come apart. His head can come off and his arms can come off and be put together in any other way. Did Elsa build you? Yeah, why? Do you know where she is? Yeah, why? Do you think you could show us the way? Yeah, why? How does this work? Ow! Stop it! So tell us a bit more about Kristoff. Well, Kristoff is our mountain man. He's out in the wilds. He only has his reindeer for his friend. I sell ice for a living. Ooh, that's a rough business to be in right now. I mean, that is really, mm, that's unfortunate. Not too worried about what he smells like or what he looks like. He's, he's someone you would always want on your side or yeah. your team, because he will be there for you no matter what. Heads up! <laughs> It is not nice to throw snow, people! Whoa, 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 feisty pants. Just let the snowman be. I'm calm. Great. Oh, oh come on! Now, Disney's known for its magic. Is this film full of, full of more of that Disney magic? I mean, there's magic throughout the whole movie. It really magic. is everywhere you go. It's not a real world, but it's 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 believable, but it's magical. I did learn something from Norway. I learned a little bit of magic from Norway. Really? A little bit of something. You want to see it? Yeah, you show me. He 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 shows all the time. Oh, no, okay. it's good. It's Is like it okay? it's one party trick. I'm gonna do it. Do it. I want to see it. Wants to see it, so I'm gonna do it. Okay. And just start sure. like this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just my hand. Mm-hmm. Like this. The magic starts to happen. Well, he's really just sucking the molecules from the atmosphere. Wait, it's magic. No, it's, it's magic. And then you think cold. That's magic. It's magic, magic. Wait, how did you do that? Can you teach me that? <laughs> Absolutely. So when you're an animator at Disney, everybody has to be trained up to use the equipment. 
Frank here trains them in this amazing... It's like a classroom almost, isn't it? It's a real classroom. Probably the coolest classroom in the world, though. What do you get up to in here? So down here is where all of our animators come at some point in production and we walk them through how to work with our characters and how to do animation here at Disney. Now, Olaf, he posed a unique challenge in creating the character, since he can do a lot of things that normal human characters can't. He can take his head off, he can melt, he can rearrange himself. We knew from the outset he might do these things in the film. <laughs> so the rigging department was tasked, and they came up with this tool called Spaces and that allows the animators to change the relationship of Olaf's parts. Once they got into, into animation, they started <laughs> doing crazy things with him. There, there's these ideas that we never thought of, but suddenly his arm is attached to his head, and he's uh, you know not standing on his legs, but he's standing on his chest, and just completely out of order and out of sorts. And he falls apart, and he puts himself back together. It was a lot of fun to just see all the things yeah. they came up with. So because that was so much fun to build and it's so much fun to watch, we thought it would be cool to give you a chance to play with Olaf. That would be great. So this setup we've got right in front of you is the exact setup that our animators see and work with when they sit down to start animating with our characters. Click and drag in just on Olaf's face. Oh, nice. So that spins him around. Boom, look at that. I've yes. got camera control. And just click once on one of these blue uh, buttons on the corner of his mouth and you start to move his mouth around. <laughs> and he's starting to talk. Oh, yes. Yeah, you're getting the hang of it. Yeah. So if we come over here, you'll see, you know, a nice orange button for his nose. Click on that. You can go ahead and start moving his nose now, too. Just like you're building a snowman. Whoa. So this is exactly what our animators have. They sit down at their desk, and they'll spend a whole week to produce about three seconds of animation. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. Frank. Thank you very much for showing me all this stuff here. Uh, that's really cool. I think so I might get into this animation. You should. It's, it's a blast. It is. This is Brittany, who helps design what the characters in the movie will eventually look like. You did a lot of sketching during the process. Oh, you... yeah. This monitor, you can just draw on the screen with this pen. I can give her more snowflakes in her hair if I want. Her initial hair design was something quite different, actually. That is different hair. It is different. It's kind of pointy. So we decided that it was not what was right for her. Her character changed, and so with that, we needed her hair to change. We ended up going through a lot of different designs. It gets a little feisty, a little fierce in some of these. And at the time, we didn't really know who she was. But this one, the her braid that she eventually adopted was the one that everyone sort of agreed felt the most like the character. Your hair is turning white. Does it look bad? No, you hesitated. No, I, I didn't. I've been drawing since two or three. Drawing for Disney was my thing. I, I wanted to be here, so. Really? Since, oh, yeah. Since you were a child? Yeah, I sent a drawing into the Disney Channel US when I was six, and they put it on TV. Wow. Yeah. It's a really bad drawing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here now. You're drawing for It's all worth it. It's so worth it. Here at Disney, they've got a whole technology team to help develop new ways of making movies. So we're standing now in the capture stage, which is one of the great ways that we can now talk with the computer. So what I'm going to ask you to do is hold this wand, What's happening here... Funny looking one. Yeah, let me uh, explain what it all <laughs> means. So what you see here are these little silver balls. And around us, uh, on top of the stage, are cameras that are reflecting red light off of these. Right. So let's get to move the wand around. And you'll see now we've got an object in the computer that's following your motion. Right, so that picture of the camera there is doing whatever I do with this one. Exactly. So we can mimic your exact motions in the real world and put it straight into the virtual world. Let me break this down. This could 
represent your camera. Exactly. And then we could be standing within the forest that you have built on a computer, a CGI forest. And then you can go around the forest with the camera. Just like you can with a real life camera, we can do it digitally. That's amazing. So we're gonna give you a chance to do that hands-on. You wanna do that? Really? Yes. Yeah, I'd love to. All right, so take that rig from Alex. Yeah. So now this is the same, a little more complex version of the wand you were just holding. You see it still has the weight and the feel of a real camera rig, right? It feels like a real camera. Yeah. And you've got a viewfinder there, so you can see a virtual window into the world. So we use this for a couple reasons. We bring directors down here and they can literally scout their locations. They can find all the great vantage points. So what we're gonna do now is gonna give you a little bit of a head-on collision. Oh, yeah, he's coming straight past the camera now. So now we've completely, uh, there we go, we've completely changed the blocking of the shot. Yeah, see if you can follow them as they pass you with the camera. Very nice. Sweet. And now we're actually inside the ship as it's crumbling. Whoa. So you see it's actually tipping now on top of you while the characters are running towards you. And what you want to do when the ship crumbles and the ice is cracking, give the camera a little bit of a shake, like there's debris falling okay. on you, and you're reacting to that. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> it's phenomenal. So we've hooked up a particle system here to this wand, and we're going to make some snowflakes. That is cool. So have you ever used a 3D scene before? No, never. This is your first day working in three dimensions. Yeah, well, yes. you know, I live in three dimensions. But that's true. Working in it. That's <laughs> but already you can see how directly you can communicate with the computer. This is amazing. I feel like I'm wielding some serious power here. I mean, I'm creating snow. Coming up in part two, I'll be checking out Sub-Zero special effects, taking a look at Demi Lovato's new music video, and stepping up to the mic with Olaf. Oh, woo! Headrush! And here's a question for you. Guess how tall the world's biggest ever snowman was? Find out in part two.